I want to see if you can remember this next bit. Part C says calculate the variance of this distribution. We needed the expected value to calculate variance. Can someone remind me, if I want to work out the variance of this distribution, I'm going to add up more things. What am I going to add up? So if you want to think. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. So we know. So let's let's all get together, right? Let's see if we can help Sophie out. We start with. We're going to add up each particular value. We want to find the difference between this and the, and the. What did we just work out? Mm, it's not the median. It's the expected value, which is very. In this case, is identical. But we write that as e. Uh, that's a capital X. Sorry, like so. Okay. Why am I subtracting? Why subtracting and not addition? I'm finding the difference, yeah? So what's the difference between 10 and 7? You do 10 take away 7, yeah? OK, so I do that. Uh, do I just square. leave that? Why do I square? Because if it's a negative number, then it is. Very good. All I want to know is how far away do these scores vary? How far? So therefore, I'm not interested in positives and negatives. I just want a positive. Uh, one last thing. What do I multiply by? Same as before. Same as before. It's the? probability of each of those different things. Okay, so I'm going to write P of X, I. And just like before, um, I'm going to start at zero and I'm going to go to the... Ooh, I was a bit cheeky before and no one caught me. Um, I don't actually go up to four. I don't go up to four. I actually go up to, count how many there are, look at the number of bar graphs right there. It goes two, three, four, five. So how many values have I got? Four. One, two, three, four of them. So if I actually counted from... Um, Zero, I'd go zero, one, two, three would actually be the last one. That was a bit sneaky. I'll put it in a different color to highlight it. Okay, so same thing here. All right, now. Can you explain them again? Yeah. Oh sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So I did. I did gloss over that. Right. So what are we talking about when we write x with an i underneath? Can I ask you guys to think back to coordinate geometry? Think way back to coordinate geometry. Okay, it's like, this is a while ago, right? Um, like, say the midpoint of two points. Do you remember that? You want to calculate the midpoint between two things. What was the, um, what was the formula? Does anyone remember? Had some x's and some y's in it. That's my clue to you, okay? Had an x, one, very good, plus, oh, before I get, oh, that's a bad plus sign. Uh, I'm still in the x value over here. It's x2, very good. And then I divide by 2. Then what do I do for my y values? y1 plus y2. And then I also divide by 2. OK, now think about this, right? In this context, the x1, x2, all they mean is a first value and a second value. They don't tell you anything about what those values actually are. That could be like negative 8. And that could be like pi. It doesn't matter what the numbers are. This just means the first one and the second one. OK, it's the same deal here. What I'm doing is I'm saying, Here's the zeroth value, and then here's the oneth value. I'm not saying first because it's not actually. Then that one, and then that one. Okay. Now, in this particular example, what's the first number that you saw on the horizontal axis? One. Mm, uh, the first one that we actually had a bar on two. was two, wasn't it? It was two, and then what was the next one? Three and four and five. So when I'm writing this. What I'm saying is, hey, add up these x values. I'm just labeling them like this. okay? And then when I go to this next part, I say what the actual values are are 2, 3, 4, 5, just like you told me. Okay? Does that make sense? If I start from 0, if I want four values, I count 0, 1, 2, 3. That gives me 4. Is that OK? It's a bit weird. Don't worry too much about it. I just noticed that I wrote it wrong. So want to fix it. OK, do you want me to write you the first part of this line? Or do you guys reckon you can start it on your own? Hands up if you reckon you can start it on your own. Hands up. All right, I, that's enough for me. If you cannot, call me over and I'll help you out. I'll give you maybe a couple of minutes to get a head start on me, and then I'll show you what mine looks like on the board. This is what we just had a look at. This is that table that you guys helped me create. Here is me calculating the variance, OK? so. I just find that there are less brackets and less symbols floating around. If I actually write the probability out the front, like we can change the order of multiplication. Do you agree? Like it doesn't matter whether you write it first or second. I write the probability out the front, and then here's my difference, and then I square it. Okay? Probability, difference, square. Probability, and so on. Okay? You do get one. That's very nice. Okay? 
When you do this standard deviation, this is something a lot of you, I've, I've seen you just kind of go straight to the answer. Please actually tell me what you're doing. Like it's, it seems immaterial. You're like, the square root of one's one, dude. I don't need to write that, do I? I want to see, as a marker, that you know how to get standard deviation from variance. Most of the time, it won't be equal to just one. Um, so actually put that step in there, please. Don't skip it. Doesn't take you long anyway. Okay. <laughs> what happens, right? Like numbers? Your numbers went wrong? Yeah. Do you mean like, what, what was your variance that you calculated? Be careful. One of the problems with this is you're just punching too many buttons into your calculator. It's really easy to just do a minus sign or double tap a button, then you're in trouble. Okay. Now, guys, I just want to show you this quickly. I'm not even going to um, walk you through. I think you guys can um, understand what's written there. It says, would you expect the standard deviation to be greater than, less than, or equal um, for this distribution compared to the original one, right? Now, I wonder if when you looked at this new graph, you're like, this looks just like the other graph, right? What's the difference, by the way? There is a difference. What's the difference? It's going the other way. Very good. It's going the other way. Do you guys remember, I'm scratching around here. Do you remember when we used to talk about skew? Do you remember that word? Yes. Po skewed. Positive and negatively skewed. skewed. This one here is positively skewed. It's where the tail is going, okay? The tail's going this way, it's positively skewed. The one we started with was negatively skewed. But otherwise, look at the shape. They're, identi they're identical, right? Do you agree with that? Just backwards. So that's why you can see I've written, given the shape, and the values are the same, they're all two, three, four, five, etc. cetera. Um, they should be identical, but then you just, you can do the calculation and you'll find exactly the same thing. Same expected value, Sorry, different expected value, but the same variance, and therefore the same standard deviation. Is that okay? Uh, one quick thing. Why is the expected value different, even though the standard deviation is the same? Let me, I'll ask it again. Why is the standard deviation and the variance, they're the same, but the expected value is completely different. Why? There's more values that are like lower. Very good. Yeah, there's more values that are lower. This is 3, whereas the previous expected value you guys calculated was 4 because you're more towards the high end of town. Does that make sense?